This is the Six Man Show, an Orlando Magic podcast, with your hosts Luke Sylvia and Jonathan Osborne, covering all things Magic basketball by fans for fans. Go Magic! What's going on, Orlando Magic fans? You guys are back with the Six Man Show. Today is April twenty fifth, two thousand twenty two. As always, I'm joined by my co-host, Luke Sylvia. Luke, what up? Not much, man. Not much. Excited to uh, get into this. And we have a very, 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 very special guest, mm. producer Kevin. Kevin, what is crack a my Greetings, guy? everyone. So glad to be here. It's It's been a while, but... Um... Always always good to be a guest on the show, guys. Only took us like six weeks of begging Kevin to come True. on the show. I was going to say, it's show. not because we didn't try to get Kev on the show. Yeah, I'm, I'm a busy guy. What can I say? Oh, okay. He really is. He's a popular guy. He's a busy guy. He likes working behind the scenes, but we got Kevin on the show. Uh, we have a very special episode for you guys. Um, we just realized the other day that we're like three and a half months away from the 10-year anniversary of the Dwight Howard trade. So we are going to break down the Dwight Mayor, the trade, how fans feel about Dwight Howard, and we're going to answer the question if Dwight Howard is the greatest Magic player of all time. We're going to get into all of that in just a bit. Before we do that, we do have a couple of housekeeping items to get through. First things first, coming up on Tuesday, May 17th, we have our draft lottery watch party at Harry Buffalo in downtown Orlando. That's 129 West Church Street. The time is still to be determined. Again, we're guessing it's going to start between 7 p.m. and 8 p.m., but just keep your eyes and your ears open uh, to hear the official time of that. We are working really hard uh, to make this a, a bigger and better event than last year. Um, Kevin's working on all kinds of trivia. We're working on you know giveaways to give some swag away and some other Orlando Magic stuff. We are also for free giving away an autographed Franz Wagner jersey. So make sure you guys come out. We're going to raffle that away. Um, if you love Franz Wagner, you love free sports memorabilia, come out. You have a chance to win the jersey. It is not orange, and we're working, I want to add. It is not orange. We <laughs> refuse to give away a, an orange Franz Wagner jersey. And then uh, we are working on a voicemail episode. We're trying to get a, a decent amount of those together so that we can have a whole episode answering your guys' voicemails. So if you call 407-603-1189, Leave a question, your hot take, whatever it is, if you want to be featured on that episode. Again, that's 407-603-1189. As we do every episode, we are going to go ahead and shout out our patrons. We'll start with Court Cousins, Drew Gooden, Armin, Keith Garcia, Zico, Carson Tulo, Nathan Lynn, Ellis, Jonathan Borges, Norm L., Magic Player History, Julio, Bailey, Matt Lyman, Eric Segovia, Gabe Gaines, Bo Outlaw Fan, Wiffle, Michael Martin, Jamel Miller, Michael Salapong, and Franz Go to Fisho. Thank you guys so much for partnering with the show and supporting us financially. If you guys are interested in supporting the show financially, you can find us at patreon.com slash the six man show. We have three tiers to choose from with varying levels of benefits. It really goes a long way and helps us do what we do. It helps us to do things like give away a signed Franz Wagner jersey and do giveaways and all this kind of cool stuff that we're trying to do for the watch party. So um, thank you to our patrons. Again, make sure you guys come out to the watch party. And Kevin and Luke, last but not least, before we start talking about all things D. White Howard, uh, we're going to go through the tankathon. So we do this every single week. We're starting to get tired of it because we are not getting the results that we want to see from this. We're going to run it one time, talk about the results. Kevin, before we do this, what what have your experiences been like this go around with the tankathon? Are you, are you getting better results than Luke and I are? Uh, yeah. I, I, I'm not a daily tankathoner. But you know, a couple times a week I'll do it. Uh, it's been been a mixed bag. If you remember early earlier on in the off season, by early on I mean I guess they're only two weeks in. But uh, I ran the tankathon a hundred times. You remember when I did that? I ran it a hundred times. I do. It was people were questioning about the validity of the the odds right. on tankathon. Right. And so I was I was curious about it, and I I don't think I saved the numbers I should have, but it it was like very even. Like it was very close to the odds that are projected. You know, for each 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 slot. You know, so we we have the second best odds and like the that breakdown that the nba puts out it was very very close to that and so but outside of doing it a hundred times in in one sitting yeah i haven't done it too much but uh yeah I've, I've had some good results and that's not to say if you did it like a thousand it might be even closer to what those right. numbers Absolutely. are so for those of you who are 
you know, questioning whether or not Tankathon is legitimate or reliable. It, it, it's pretty, it's as close as it gets. You're not going to find a, a better tool. So right. we're going to go ahead and sim the lottery. Here we go. And the Magic end up with a third pick. So uh, the Lakers jumped seven spots. So that pick goes to the New Orleans Pelicans. Cleveland, of all teams, jumped 12 spots <laughs> to number two. And then Orlando sitting there at three. San Antonio jumped five spots sitting there at number four. Man, imagine Cleveland jumping up there as if they're not already dangerous enough. That'd be wild. That'd be crazy. I mean, if any, you know, any of these kind of like, you know, the teams that got left out of the playing game, if like the Clippers or, you know, Charlotte or, you know, Cleveland ends up jumping into that, I'm going to be pretty furious because yep. that, that kind of luck. It, like Cleveland doesn't need any more lottery luck. They've had plenty of that over the course of the last decade. We don't need any more of that. Yep. All right. You clicked on this episode for a reason. You saw the title. You wanted to hear our thoughts about Dwight Howard. We're going to talk about the Dwight Mayor. Again, we're going to talk about the trade, how everyone feels about Dwight now. Kevin is going to lead things off by kind of taking us through just a refresher of the Dwight Mayor now that it's been about 10 years. Yeah, first off, it's hard to believe it's been 10 years. You know, if you ask me, I'm an old man now. I just I just turned 30, you know, mm. a few a couple weeks ago, actually. And so it's hard to believe that it's been 10 years. Um, but as the um, as the resident old man here on the six man show, I, I guess I was the oldest during the Dwight Mayor as well. And so I have a pretty fresh memory of that and going through that. Um, but like I said, hard to believe it's been 10 years. But uh, for a lot of, I know there's a lot of Magic fans now that like weren't even around as far as like you know a fan necessarily during that time, and so we thought it was a good idea to kind of walk through what that really that season was like that 2011-12 season because it was it was unlike anything I've ever seen in sports like not just like my favorite teams like any sports it was weird it was wacky it was a, a roller coaster and we're gonna break some of that down for you here today. Um, First off, the biggest thing that was going on that year before any of the drama happened was Dwight was hurt. Like for most of his career, you know, prior to that, he had been kind of an Iron Man. You know, he rarely missed games and certainly didn't miss a chunk of games at a time. Uh, but 2011 12 was when we first started to see some injuries uh, with Dwight, especially his back. His back was the big thing that was really kind of plaguing him. Um, through that 2011-12 season, um, and we won't go too much into that, but it was a it was a genuine thing. It was, it was a real injury. It was a real problem, which we see oftentimes with with big men. And so, however, as far as the drama goes, um, there was a lot of um, kind of rumors and behind the scenes, you know, talk that Dwight was just unhappy in Orlando. He was unhappy with Stan. He was unhappy with the front office. He was unhappy with his team um, that was around him. You name it, he wasn't happy, and there was a lot of speculation that he was going to be be leaving soon um, because Dwight uh, had a uh, an ETO an early termination option uh, that he could uh, sign or I guess it, I guess he had to sign to waive it either way he could be a free agent after the 2011-12 season and so he could either have that ETO or or waive it and then stay on for another year be there for the 12-13 season so all of these things are swirling around all this drama it's all a huge distraction for this team because you remember this Orlando Magic team now it wasn't the same team but only three years earlier was in the finals two years earlier was in the Eastern Conference finals and arguably the best Magic team ever that 0-9-10 team I know it's debatable but that regular season was unreal and less than two years later, this whole drama stuff starts coming around. So it was crazy, but I'm going to start getting into like the, the details of this because it just, it, when you think about the time span that this happened, it, it's just, it just adds to the craziness because it was only a few months where all this happened. So there's all these rumors. And then I've got a, a personal story I want to add in here. I know I've been talking for a while, but I want to add a personal story because all this Dwight Mayer stuff. Kev. There we go. All this Dwight Mayer stuff really kicked off from March and April and on. February, like I think it was February fifteenth of twenty twelve. I had Kevin would remember the date. <laughs> well, I I looked it up today because I knew we were okay, going to talk about right, this. I so know. I knew it was February. I think but. you had a rough feeling that it was. You know, like, oh, you know what? I I remember that being around Valentine's <laughs> Day. Yeah, I kind of did. So I found yeah. found pictures on Facebook. I had literally one of the greatest privileges of my life was this night. Uh, one of my dear friends. Uh, was pretty high up in an organization that was one of the major corporate partners for the Magic at the time. They still are. Um, and uh, that friend had an extra seat at this super swanky 
uh, like party, like for the high level corporate sponsor for the magic, um, that took place at Epcot, um, in one of like the private dining areas and stuff. It was, it was insane. So like it was a, maybe like 50 people plus all the magic players, coaching staff, some of the front office guys, um, uh, Rich DeVos was there. So like, it was insane. Like it was a tiny event and I, I had the privilege of being there. Um, what made it cool obviously was because i'm a diehard magic fan and i'm i literally sat next to ryan anderson at he was at my table which was insane it was so fun um jj reddick like all the i played i played family feud with uh if you remember daniel orton and chris duhan i was on the team yeah. with those guys russell westbrook plus yeah that's right exactly so however you gotta remember all this drama is going on in the background and so it was the most awkward event at the same time, as much fun as it was for me, it was so awkward. It was so tense. You had Stan, you had Dwight, which we'll talk about that later too. Uh, it was it was pain like it, it was so tense. You could feel it. Like everyone's laughing, have a good time, but it, it was strange. Um, I I will also uh, I'll open up the floor here. If you remember that team, if you could guess which person maybe on that team got very intoxicated that night. Um, <laughs> I, I want to hear if you have any guesses because it was it was very entertaining. I don't know if I'll, I'll confirm it, but I'm curious what your guesses are. <laughs> you've, you've told us in the past. Um, I, okay, if you remembered it. I don't unfortunately, know remember I, it. I don't remember okay. who the, the gentleman was. Okay, that's I, fine. I want, I'll, I'll take a stab, right? Because we're, we're talking 11-12 season, right? Yeah. So if we're talking 11-12, I'm going to say Glenn Big Baby Davis. Was Ooh, he there? That's a great guess. No. Mm, uh, if, if you know mm. what this is in reference to, if you're watching on YouTube, <laughs> if you know the travel dance. Oh, Chris Duhon. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. I'm going to leave it there. You said it. Okay. That's it. All right. Homeboy had a I great time. I can see time. that. All right. He had a great time. Well, yeah. So, uh, but no. So that was crazy. That was a lot of fun, but it was so tense. Like it was, it was really awkward in a lot of ways, but it was still great. Uh, all right. So this is where the story gets juicy. All right. So there's been all this stuff back and forth. The trade deadline, so that was a lockout season. So the trade deadline was pushed back a month. It was like March 15th. And um, uh, so like I said, there's all this, all this drama, all this potential, like Dwight's going to leave. You know, he's, he wants to go to Brooklyn. That was the big thing. Towards the end of end of going up, up to the trade deadline, it was this Dwight has demanded a trade to Brooklyn, and everyone thought it was a done deal. It's going to happen. You're getting, getting ready to buy Brook Lopez jerseys. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Brook Lopez was a uh, was the the key part of that that deal, along with some draft picks and stuff. But it was like uh, years later, coming back, you know, there was reports like this this deal was on the table. It was ready to go, um, and and by all accounts, it, it seems like that was going to happen. Then the night before the trade deadline, the Magic are in San Antonio playing the Spurs. Everyone assumes this is the end of this Magic team as you know it. Dwight's gone. Probably a lot, a lot of other guys going to be dealt. You know, when you have a huge trade like that, you just got to move a lot of people. And so it was this very strange night. And then um, the craziest thing happened, just completely out of left field. Uh, J.J. Reddick actually has talked about this recently, and I'm just going to read quotes from him because he he was there, and he, you know, it, it was just a surprise and confused and everything. And so... Um, he talked about Dwight, you know, wanting to go to a bigger market and JJ, you know, is always for the players. And he's like, yeah, that's players have, have a total right to do that. You want to work somewhere. It's just like any other job. If you've got a place you want to go, that's totally your prerogative. You're down. That's totally right. So he says, we play the game referring to the San Antonio game. We get on the bus and we get on the plane and I was kind of in the back in the player section, listening to music. And then all of a sudden I noticed that guys are goofing around and they start taking pictures. And he's like, okay, I guess it's our last time together. We're going to take pictures. The writing was on the wall. Like I said, he thought the team was going to be kind of breaking up the next day. And then after like five minutes, Dwight's just like, you know what? I love you guys. I'm coming back. And really, that was it. There was no like, there wasn't a heart to heart. It was just like he he was having a good time on the plane and decided he wanted to come back. And that, that's, so that's what bizarre. JJ said. So right there in that moment, boom, completely surprising all the players surprising his own like his own guys his own manager his own all that stuff completely out of left field surprised everyone surprised magic fans and so we get the news of that and there was a little bit of you know magic social media at the time you know it, we just freaked out it was like our, our guy's staying it's amazing it's great it's awesome and so was I don't that know if, kev can i interject here yeah was i was that, gonna ask if you guys remember march, was that march 14th yeah you know trade line is march 15th 
It was literally the night before the trade deadline because, like I, I said, I, I pulled up st- you know Dwight's game logs, and it makes sense. He had a great night. He had a great night. The team yep. he played thirty nine minutes that night. Just I always like to do this. Like when I when I hear about a specific night, a specific moment, I I send you guys all the time on my Facebook memories like a post that I made about a Magic <laughs> game from like 2011, 2012. And they're really good. And and oh, of course. Um, but I every time I don't like send this in the chat all the time, but like every time I will personally go and find that box score and I want to know like how that night went. Like what was yep. I thinking on that night? Dwight that night, guys, uh, 22 points, 12 rebounds on 50%, uh, 56% from the field. Um, let's see. He had three blocks, uh, two steals. I mean, he had himself a good night. It was he a normal. a Wendell kind of night, you know? Right, absolutely. It was a, but it was a stereotypical Dwight Howard yeah, type of performance. But one that I'm sure getting on that, that plane or bus uh, it probably felt pretty good about himself and then everybody else kind of you know i'm sure there's just like kind of emotion got to him and he was just like all right that's it i'm coming back (laughs) now luke i'm more interested in in what your facebook post was that night can we get any uh i don't know insight into that i don't know if i if i if i had one that night i i don't know i'm gonna i'm gonna search for that because i'm interested Luke from 10 years ago had a very juicy Facebook. I'll just put it that way, you guys. Mm. It was really something. Um, Um, Just a couple of things that I I wanted to add. Um, So, like, briefly before the trade deadline, after a game, he's, like, telling everybody, hey, like, the deal's about to be done. Like, I'm I'm going to Brooklyn. And then all of this stuff happens. What's even – what adds, I think, to Magic fans' fire about this is in March of 2011 – Dwight Howard hosts like a whole barbecue like for the fan base. Like I, I'm not leaving. I'm staying. Yep. Blah, blah blah. Says all this stuff, and then the very next season, it's like, oh, I I, I want to get out of here. I'm oh, gone. I've got one more for you because it gets worse when it comes to Magic fans. That next day, March 15th, when Dwight waived his ETO, his early he officially waived it. That means he was on the books for the 12-13 season. Dwight released a statement through. Um, uh, who, who did Alex Kennedy work for? What's the whatever that I can't remember the real real GM. That's, he mm, did an interview yeah. with real GM, and uh, I I pulled this quote because I knew we were going to get to it. This was the same day of the ETO. Quote: I have gotten some bad advice. I apologize for the circus I have caused for the fans of our city. They didn't deserve none of this. That's a direct quote. I'm sorry for from the bottom of my heart. I will do whatever I can to make this right and do what I was put in Orlando to do. This has been a very hard time, Howard said. For me, my family, and all of us, the fans deserve a better hero, and I will make that happen. I love and appreciate my fans and this city. That was March 15th of 2012. Keep that in mind when I tell (laughs) you. did not make that happen. When I tell you what the next three weeks looked like. Three weeks. Okay. So we've had all this drama. We think Dwight's staying. It's I cannot tell you. What the small corner of Magic Internet was like that night. We used to, I used to be part of the old school Orlando Magic message boards, like on the Magic website, and we were freaking out. It was, it was a lot of fun. So we have our moment, and then in an instant, it all kind of falls back into the same groove of Dwight being unhappy. The rumors start flying again. It's ugly. That's March fifteenth. I'm gonna fast forward just just for time's sake. Keep in mind, all these rumors are still happening. I'm fast forwarding to April fifth. April 5th, the season's kind of coming closer to an end. Uh, and again, we're three weeks after the March 15th, I think. Uh, this is when like it all really hits the fan because there's this been... This is the fun part. Yeah, as if that wasn't fun before. Because this is where the... the Sponsored p- by Pepsi. That's right. Diet, the Pepsi. diet yeah. It's where the really strong rumors of Stan Van Gunny start coming through. Like, full-on Dwight Howard has demanded that Stan Van Gundy be fired. Like, those are the rumors. That's what's going around. And so we get to this incredibly awkward media availability <laughs> in the Magic's uh, practice court, where it's and really it's now quickly, like if you haven't seen it, you've got to watch it. Like it's it's. Can, I just want to bring up how bizarre it is to see that many microphones at a Magic oh, media yeah. availability. Yeah. You don't see that these days. No, no back when the team so was good. Yeah, it's 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 crazy, and also just national attention. Like there were national writers yeah. there. You know. Anyway. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's media availability, and, and Stan has point-blank asked, like, hey, we've heard this. This rumor is, like, really prevalent. 
what's going on. And Stan Van Gundy, God bless the man. <laughs> that dude does not BS. He doesn't care. He he bows to no one. Like, he doesn't care what superstar you are. He's just going to call it like it is. This is what Stan said. And if you haven't watched this, you have to watch it. It's so cringe. But he says, I was told it was true by people in our management. So mm. right from the top, that's literally what he said. Right from the top, they told me. Uh, you know, he said... Um, uh, oh, oh, asked about players. You know, he said they haven't told me anything, and they don't need to. I'm the coach right now, and I'm the coach until they decide I'm not the coach. It's 12:02 right now. <laughs> if they want to fire me at 12:05, I'll go home and find something to do. I'll have I'll have a good day. And this is where it gets worse because then Dwight walks in, <laughs> walks right next to Stan, and puts his arm around Stan, and literally says, "Stan, we're not going to worry about that, right?" And that's when Stan's got his Diet Pepsi and takes a sip, like, oh, oh, gosh, oh, no. <laughs> and then he says, yeah, that's what I just said. We, we just got to be worried about winning games. And that was it. They separated. And, or I think Stan said, now nah, you guys should ask this guy some questions. Yeah. And yeah. so literally the most. And like, Dwight has it, no idea what he's walking into. By absolutely. The way. It was just, it was the craziest, craziest. Like, And again, that's three weeks after Dwight bizarre. You know, opted back in, had that statement. And now, you know, he's calling for the coach to be fired, which we'll find out here in a second was true. Like, it re- he really did call for it. So, uh, and, and Dwight, to this day, is adamant that he never asked management to fire Stan Van Gundy. I believe Stan. But well, yeah. Dwight sticks to that story. It's crazy. It's tough. But um, so they finish out the season, and it's just awkward. The whole rest of the season is terrible. It's awkward. Dwight ends up. If I if I remember correctly, Dwight ends up getting injured ultimately, like for the rest of the season. He's, he I don't, I don't like think he played month in the playoffs. Or something. He did again. Pl- yeah. No, yeah, he didn't play. So right, um, March fifth, he plays. He all we got, and then right, he, exactly. he plays that night. They have a game against the Knicks. Um, mm-hmm. He puts up a stinker of a night. Um, shockingly, eight and right. eight is what he puts right. up. And he his quote about that game, and, and Kevin, I don't know if you were going to go into detail about it, but his quote about that game was uh essentially i i was i couldn't like it was the worst it was he first of all he's called that the worst day of his life um and then talked about how the night against the knicks like he couldn't think straight he said yeah i couldn't buy a bucket i like he just it was like it felt like a a movie to be quite honest like you don't think like that could happen in the nba where it was like that like something like that would happen you can just like get the feeling of you know you're going to play in madison square garden or no, in Orlando, I should say. You're going to play in in Orlando that night, and you just walk in. The arena's probably full. Everybody's with, and Dwight walks in there, being like, "Man, I am, I am not with it tonight." And and he goes on to say, so he posts that terrible, terrible thing, and then uh, he posts that terrible stat line, and then they play. Uh, let's see, two days after that would be his last game in a Magic uniform against Philly. And he posts 20 points and 22 rebounds and six assists. And and what Stan later, like two years down the road, called the most courageous performance that he's seen anybody play because Dwight could barely walk. Right. So Dwight had that night against the Knicks and then was like, I need to, I, I have to redeem myself in some capacity right. and just went out and obliterated Philadelphia and the Magic win that game by like six or something like that. Right. And for those that that don't know the the reference of, of we all we got, so after um, it basically was um, announced that Dwight Howard wouldn't be returning, you know, for the rest of the regular season and would be out for the playoffs. You know, Hito Turkaloo was dealing with some injuries as well. Um, John Denton wrote a piece that you can still find uh, up on OrlandoMagic dot com. Um, Glenn Davis said, "We all we got. That's the way it is now. At the end of the day." No matter what we go through, we have to be there for each other in every aspect of the game. So that was Glenn Big Baby Davis, um, April 20th, 2012, um, you know, just like a week before the playoffs start, and the Magic lose 4-1 to one in the first round against the Indiana Pacers. They win the first game. I was going to say, they won game one, though. They win game one, and That's then the rest of the it. series like, isn't particularly close. <laughs> right. Big Baby the, led the team the in scoring. Way. And that That's count. the last three playoff series that we've had. We win the first Correct. game of the first round, and then we... On the, the road, sweep. on the road, by the way. On the road. Yeah, which that was a fun game, that game in Indiana. I still remember that. And then I also remember game three. J.J. Redick hit a huge three that sent overtime, I want to say, at home. Like, that was, like, a really, really fun moment at home. But mm. anyway, so that happens. Playoffs happen. 
all while that's happening, there's still like this, like, you know, kind of weight on our shoulders, like this whole Dwight thing, like he's still on the team, he's hurt, what's going to happen? And so uh, because it was a lockout season, the playoffs started late, but obviously we, we were only in the playoffs for five games. And so very soon after the playoffs were done, May 21st, Stan Van Gundy and general manager Otis Smith both fired same day. Um, and so, you know, it, it kind of looks like Dwight got what he wanted. You know, he uh, he requested that Stan be gone. I don't know if he requested Otis as well, but regardless, that's what happened, which I think uh, this is a different conversation. I think Otis maybe sometimes gets a bad rap. You know, he, he had some questionable decisions, but he also put together a great era of magic basketball. And so, yeah, um, but regardless, they both get fired. Dwight gets what he wants. And so we think, OK, cool. Like, like, obviously that. That really stinks. Stan didn't deserve that. He's the best coach, really, I think, in Magic history. But Dwight got what he wants, and now he's going to stay, right? Nope. That didn't change a thing. So it was kind of the, the double whammy. Like, the Magic tried to appease their star. They fired you know, a couple guys they thought that maybe would help that. Um, and, and Dwight's stance didn't change. He still wanted to be dealt. Still wanted to be dealt specifically to Brooklyn. Of course, we know um, in August... He got he got dealt to the Lakers, and we're going to talk more about that trade here in a little bit. But um, Dwight, by the way, years later came out and said, "Yeah, I really didn't want to go to L.A. Like, I really, really wanted to go to Brooklyn, and the Magic traded me to L.A. anyway." I remember that direct quote. So it's like, poor guy, poor guy. <laughs> I mean, he got traded to L.A. with Kobe and Steve Nash. <laughs> like, oh man. <laughs> yeah, I think at the time though, we also didn't really uh, realize the extent of Dwight's injury towards 100%. the end of his time in Orlando. I mean, he plays just yeah. 54 games in that final season. I mean, makes the all-star game the next two years, 76 points, 71 or 76 games, excuse me, in 2012, 2013, then 2013, 14, 71 games. And then that's just like really when the rails like start to come off for, for Dwight Howard. And um, yeah, we just never saw the same level of dominance really after like the, the you know, 2009, 2010 team. It just, he was never the same guy, and so yeah. All right, well, Kevin, you you crushed that. That was that was awesome. That was that was perfect. Right, kind thanks of. Thanks for having me on the show, guys. <laughs> yeah, very funny, <laughs> hilarious. I think that's going to do a, a great job for like you mentioned when you started. We have so many fans that listen to the show and fit you know follow the team now that have been basically watching since Dwight was traded like not really before so terrible timing. i think this is going to be a, their part yeah terrible, terrible timing, timing honestly you guys um, yeah like, people tell us that on twitter i, Golly, I want, like that air that dwight era like at its peak guys it was just the most fun it was well, the most fun and think I just, of how I can't unfun wait to this year was and just like th- like the complete opposite literally of that. flip it like literally yeah. we won 59 games one year that's almost yeah, what we did but lost I, this year i wanted to to bring this up and i don't know if we were going to get to this point but i wanted to bring this up in regard to Dwight getting Stan fired. And I used air quotes there because it's still debated, right? Like Dwight says it never happened. Um, Stan Van Gundy on Twitter in response to someone uh, just 12 days ago, someone said to him on Twitter on, on a random thing, right? Someone said, hey, Stan, we still love you here in Orlando. It still pains us what transpired between you and Dwight. And Stan replies and says all he says, nothing else. Dwight did not get me fired. That's what he said. And I don't know what that means. I don't know if that means like he's saying that, yes, Dwight requested, but it's not the reason I got fired. Or did he like, what did he mean? And I, I, if I could ask Stan Van Gundy anything, I would just quote tweet that and be like, tell me exactly what you mean, because I don't know. If I could, what I would guess that is Dwight and and Stan have made up like they've publicly said that yeah we've made up we're good now right I don't know what level of good is but right I I tend to think Stan uh, will always defend his players you know especially now that they've made up and so I feel like he would be be more inclined to kind of take the side of Dwight just to protect him a little bit now versus you know the Magic organization which Stan is you know outwardly vocally uh, against you know some of the ownership you know and all that kind of stuff he's talked about that stuff before but um, that's kind of how I would guess. Cause, cause the flip side of that is in that interview on April 5th, he literally said the people at the top of this organization have told me that that's literally what he said. Right. And so that's how I, I just would want, guess. So I, th- this I, is where, well, it is. And, and this is where I start to wonder, like he was told that, but was it true? And Dwight sure. says he didn't yeah. do it. So like, w- 
who are we believing? Right. And, and I know that it's you know easy to say like, I believe Stan in that moment at that press conference. Yep. Stan, they don't have to be mutually exclusive. Stan yeah, could have right. been right. telling the truth, but it could may not have been the truth. That's fair. So right. I, I think that that's a whole other thing as well. That like I just think that this is something we're not gonna know until mm. Dwight and Stan are far removed from the NBA. So I, we're I, gonna get Stan on the pod, <laughs> and we're just gonna ask him. Did yeah. Dwight Howard get you fired? Yeah. And if not, what changed between that interview and now? I can't lie that to you. To believe that. There is not an interview I want to do more than one with Stan. I think it's entirely in the realm of possibilities, just given the amount of mm-hmm. like Twitter replies that he does on a given day. Right. It's just a matter of if he actually wants to commit to doing if it. If he wants to. And He's he gonna, might not he'll, want to. He'll see, the, can, he'll see us tweet at him at some point. Whether that's with yeah. this episode, whatever it might be, that we you know quote tweet him and and say something to him about it and whatever, but I I mean truly I don't know what happened and I I still stand by that I have no idea, and I'm not gonna act like I do I just think that like there is so much that that could have gone wrong or that like so, what transpired I I don't know that we'll know but I hope we find out. Yeah. Kev, we got anything else on that before? Now we're going to, I guess, transition to break down the trade. Yeah, that's where I was going to go next. Is, you know, that trade was, you know, huge, seismic for for not just the Magic, for several other teams. But, yeah, we'll talk right. specifically about the Magic and how that how that break down for us. All right, so let's get right into that. So we've already talked about, you know, this is, I mean, six, seven months of, of drama and buildup. And I just remember as a Magic fan during this time just being, like, so confused, not sure what to believe are the rumors that we're hearing on ESPN true? And then, you know, he, he sought or waves the early termination options. Like, oh, he wants to be here. And then, like you said, three weeks later, it's like, was he, you know, led astray or whatever the case may be when he waved that? The Magic were going to follow up on some promise to trade him after that? I, I don't really know. What we do know is April 9th, 2012, the trade is made official. So it is a four-team trade involving the Orlando Magic the Los Angeles Lakers, the Denver Nuggets, and the Philadelphia 76ers. Some other marquee names. Obviously, everyone knows Dwight goes to the Lakers. But Andre Iguodala played for the 76ers at the time. He was moved to the Denver Nuggets. Um, Andrew Bynum, uh, not long removed for a, from a championship with the Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, he's moved to the Philadelphia 76ers. I, I, did he ever play for the 76ers? No. If, if he did, it was like a handful of games. I don't think he did. And then just like was traded, he was only in the sign with the Cavs at one point. He was only in the NBA for two more years after that. Yeah, the the knees with with Bynum just like a a big NBA what if. Um, But specifically for the Magic, uh, this trade saw us deal away Dwight Howard, Chris Duhon, who we referred to earlier in this podcast for (laughs) extracurricular activities, uh, Jason Richardson, and Earl Clark. Um, in total, the Orlando Magic received Nikola Vucevic from the Philadelphia 76ers, Aaron Aflalo from the Denver Nuggets, Maurice Harkless from the 76ers, Al Harrington from the Nuggets, Josh, Mc, Josh McRoberts, I forget, was he coming from the Lakers? Where was Josh McRoberts coming from? It does not matter, but I, I'm blanking. Uh, Christian Ianga, a Denver 2013 second round pick, and then three future protected first round picks. Nuggets 2014 first round pick, the 76ers 2015 first round pick, and the Lakers 2017 first round pick. The Magic only saw one of these picks. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. Of everything that we received, um, Iyenga, Christian Iyenga was waived right after the trade. Uh, Mick Roberts was traded to Charlotte for Hakeem Warwick at the 2013 trade deadline, and then we immediately waived Hakeem Warwick. Al Harrington uh, played one season for the Magic, then was waived prior to the 2013-2014 season. Uh, 2014, on draft day, uh, the Magic trade Aaron Aflalo to the Denver Nuggets for Evan Fournier and Devin Marble. Uh, the first round pick from Denver in 2014, which actually belonged to the Knicks and then was traded to the Magic, uh, turned into Alfred Payton. Basically what happened is uh, Sam Hinkie convinced Rob Hennigan that they were going to take Alfred Payton. The 76ers were at 10, um, and the Magic really wanted Alfred Payton, so Sam Hinkie talked Rob Hennigan into returning that first round pick that the Magic received in the Dwight Howard trade and uh, number 12, which turned to be Dario Saric for the Magic to have the rights to Alfred Payton. 
Funny enough, if the Magic don't make this deal and trade that back to the 76ers, that pick would not have conveyed until 2000, or excuse me, the 76ers, let me backtrack just a little bit. If the Magic don't trade that pick back to Philadelphia, who Philadelphia ends up using that in 2017, they traded that to Sacramento to draft De'Aaron Fox, but it would not have conveyed to the Magic with the original protections. That ended up being the 2018 26 pick, which ended up being Landry Shamit. Now, fast forward to 2015, the Magic trade Maurice Harkless to Portland for a 2020 second round pick, which was 31 through 55 protected. That ended up being the 46th pick and did not convey. The uh, I think it was the, yeah, Portland ended up drafting CJ Ellaby with that. Now, this is where things get a little bit crazy about the Lakers pick. So the Lakers ended up winning the second overall pick in each of the 2015, 2016, and 2017 drafts. Now we know that the lottery odds have changed, but that is still crazy that they ended up with the second pick in each of those years. But due to previous conditions on some of their draft picks from the Steve Nash trade with Phoenix and due to the Stepien rule, which states that teams cannot trade their first-round pick in consecutive years. So you cannot trade your 2015 and your 2016 first-round pick. You have to trade your 2015 and then your 2017 first-round pick if you're going to trade multiple picks. Um, But because of all of those conditions, the Magic actually ended up with two second-round picks, the 2017 33rd second-round pick, which was Wessa Wundu, and then in 2018, the Magic actually ended up trading the pick and Brooklyn drafted Rodian Kuruks with the 40th pick. Long-term from this deal, for years, the Magic end up with Nikola Vucevic and Evan Fournier, who we now know Nikola Vucevic was traded in the trade deadline of 2021 for Franz Wagner, Wendell Carter, and the 2023 Bulls first-round pick. It was the 2021 first-round pick that the Magic used to trade for Franz Wagner. It's a lot. It's a lot. I know I messed it up a little bit, but uh, yeah, we've got most of the framework of that deal and just kind of how everything played out. The craziest thing to me, and and Kevin and I were talking about this earlier, is the Alfred Payton, Dario Saric whole debacle where we gave them the first round pick back for Alfred Payton in hindsight. Like much, oh my gosh! And <laughs> as Kevin, Kevin left and got up to go get his Alfred Payton jersey. Nah, I had it already, and now he's come back with it. I knew we that's were incredible. Go there. Yeah, I, I did get Alfred Payton jersey one time, but and then just like the crazy stroke of luck for the Lakers, which turned to be unlucky for us. But three straight years with the second overall pick, so that's D'Angelo Russell, and then they draft Brandon Ingram and Lonzo Ball. 2016, 2017, and they flipped those guys plus some other guys and picks for Anthony Davis, and then the Lakers won a title from yeah. that. I think it's Los Angeles. You're welcome. All, every bit of winning that they have to like they've had in the past 22 years, in one way or another, has come from the Orlando Magic. <laughs> you're not wrong. When you think about it like I'm that, not you're wrong. not wrong. I will say though, like looking back, as far as the actual trade is concerned. Just the pieces that were in the trade, not talking about draft picks that turned into whatever. Like, I mean, the Magic definitely won. Like, there's no question about that. You know, you know, if you look at it on paper, we talked about earlier guys like Andrew Bynum only in the league for two more years. Iguodala only played for a year at Denver and went off to Golden State. I know we're not going to talk about the other teams, but what I did want to mention was, you know, the the few bright spots that the Magic have had over the last few years have all come from this trade. Like, not all, but most of them. You know, Vucevic obviously you know, was the brightest spot of the last 10 years, really, for the Magic. Well, nine, eight years, whatever it was before he was dealt, you know. Um, And so, obviously, grateful for that. Um, There weren't a whole lot of bright spots since then, but we have some of our brightest spots going forward because of this deal still, like you mentioned, you know. uh, We have, because we got Vooch, then we traded Vooch, now we have Franz and Wendell and the 2023 uh, Bulls first-round pick, which... Might not be that bad, you know. They're they're kind of uh, on the ropes here with with Milwaukee right now as as we're recording this. So who knows what that team's gonna look like next year? Um, but yeah, I mean, 
it's crazy that here we are 10 years later and we are still reaping the benefits in kind of an indirect way from, from that deal. It's kind of crazy to think about. I think there's, it's not likely at all, but I, I wouldn't say there's, there's a non zero chance that that 2023 bulls first round pick turns into a lottery pick. It's possible. Like some crazy things would have to happen, but I mean, it could happen. That pick probably ends up somewhere in the like high teens, I'm guessing. Right. But um, but yeah, I wonder when I was going through this, and it was a lot of fun to, to go through this. The craziest thing for Kevin and I earlier today was trying to figure out what the heck happened with that 2017 Lakers pick. And I, I still don't have a 100% understanding of it, but basically they make the Steve Nash deal before they before the Lakers trade for Dwight Howard and due to the protections from uh, the pick that um, they traded to Phoenix and then Phoenix trades the pick to Philadelphia and then the pick is just like it's not conveying it's not conveying and 2017 was like they're the Lakers last chance like if they didn't end up in the top three they were going to lose that pick and then it turns into freaking Brandon Ingram a little bit of rigging there it feels like three straight number two overall picks for Magic fans who have witnessed lottery hell for the last I'm better part of the last one decade, pick. I just want one. I mean, we got Oladipo, but unfortunately, it was like the wrong pick to get yeah. the number two draft. Right. The worst draft. Or the number, the wrong draft to get the number two pick. I'm dyslexic, I guess. <laughs> but it's just like, hmm, that's that's pretty interesting. The Lakers were on the ropes. You get three straight number two picks, and then you flip that for Anthony Davis, and you win a title. Seems very convenient. Yeah. You know how it is. You know how it is. Yeah, unfortunately we do. But yeah, I, I, going through this, I I just I'm curious now. To, I'm sure unless guys are leaving in free agency, like who, what else will like stem from some of these deals that we've seen over the years? You know, like you don't even realize, mm -hmm. um, like you know the the Pelicans, you know, ended up with Zion. Like you just you, you never know what's going to happen with stuff like this. So it was a uh, it was really interesting to to kind of go through that. I think we all. And I think this is universally accepted that the Magic like emphatically won this trade. Yeah. Which you don't see that when you trade away a Hall of Fame talent. Mm. Right. Especially at the time, like 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 I mentioned, at the time it was it was viewed as a very mutually beneficial trade. Like like I mentioned, like Philadelphia, they they dealt some guys as part of this trade, but they got Andrew Bynum and Denver, they got Andre Iguodala, who at the time wasn't this like super old vet that just kind of had a niche role like he was still you know very viable and mm -hmm. super athletic and um and then obviously los angeles got dwight and so at the time i was like you know what this is a great trade for everybody and on the surface it was but fast forward even just a couple years after that you know it really wasn't the case and now all you know a decade later it clearly clearly isn't the case so right all right we're gonna get into a more uh nuanced conversation about dwight howard now we're gonna we're gonna lead this off we, we went to the Magic community to see how people felt about Dwight and how you feel about Dwight 10 years later. And we've got a voicemail that we're going to play here to kind of kick this off. And then we'll just have like the, the, the Dwight Howard conversation. Nathan Clore in Greenville, South Carolina. But I grew up in Orlando, Florida. I'll always have disdain for Dwight Howard for what he did to the Magic. Um, we also haven't even won a playoff series since Dwight Howard, and that was like 10 years ago. So I can't believe that people would vote on the poll that they're indifferent about Dwight now because I always hate Dwight Howard. I get hate's a strong word, but I <laughs> Dwight's an exception. Strong word. Hate Dwight Howard, that is a strong word. And one thing that I will say is, it's not entirely Dwight Howard's fault that we haven't won a playoff series no. uh, since then. That's what uh, I, was I would add. I would throw it's most been, of that blame at Rob Hennigan. It's been ten years, man. Like Dwight wasn't the reason this team hasn't rebuilt successfully in the last ten years and like three try. Like it, it is right. not at all Dwight's fault. And uh, just by me saying that, people can guess like what direction I feel about Dwight. But I I get it. I mean, it stinks. Like you you the last good thing that happened, like he just you know, essentially forced his way out and that's just was what it was. And that's, you know, that's the, that's the last truly elite asset the magic have had. So before we get into like our, our personal feelings and we definitely will do that. 
I was super interested to see how like Magic Twitter yeah. felt about Dwight because I was shocked by the results. Mm. So we posted a few days ago. I said August 9th will be 10 years since the Magic traded Dwight Howard. How do you feel about Dwight 10 years later? And I put up a poll. And the three options were still hate him, I've forgiven him, and then indifferent. I was expecting overwhelmingly people to still hate Dwight. We got 478 votes on this poll. So first of all, like the response was amazing. But the most popular response with 43.1% is I've forgiven him. Second, with 42.1% is folks that are indifferent to Dwight Howard, leaving 14.9% of people that interact with the poll that still hate Dwight. So... Upwards of 85% of people do not hate Dwight anymore. That, that's surprising because... I did not think we would ever see that day. I think I think it's surprising because... Uh, and I have a theory as to why the poll turned out it did, as it did. But I, Twitter is a toxic place. Twitter is not for like, like the, the people that can't take criticism, whatever it might be. Twitter is not for those people. So I very much expected it to just be like overwhelmingly still hate him, whether it's people being dramatic or being genuine. And I think the biggest reason about like the reason there was such a big turnout for the indifferent people, I think a lot of it is because of what Kevin talked about at the beginning was like these people didn't experience it, right? Right. Like they they don't hate them and they haven't forgiven them because they'd never hated them because they're indifferent because they became fans after or they just were too young to remember it. So I think that that's got to be the reason for for the result, though. I am still shocked that the people that didn't experience it aren't just like going with the flow and being like still hate them. Yeah. You know, that was kind of surprising uh, to me right there with you, Luke. I'm very, very surprised. Uh, and you took the words out of my mouth. I think it does probably have a lot to do with age. Um uh, yeah, but but still, like for it to be that low, like even just regardless of age or when it, like fourteen percent is just that's so very that's surprising. So out of the four hundred seventy eight, that would be seventy one people out of four hundred seventy eight say they still that's hate shocking. Dwight. Although I do think your point is very valid that there are plenty of our listeners and and followers who just didn't live through the Dwight Mayor. Mm-hmm. We still have a lot of people that were. And when we get to our next conversation, I think that even became much more apparent. If we start asking the question if, you know, Dwight is the greatest magic player of all time, people come out of the woodwork, mm-hmm. you know, arguing, you know, about Shaq. And we'll get into that in a little bit. But that shows me that there are still a lot of people who have been fans since even before the Dwight Howard era that still really hold strong and true to, you know, the the Shaq teams. Yeah, I, I think... I'm I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts. You know, we we put the poll out there. Um, I'd love to hear really all three of us kind of chime in and and hear kind of how you feel about Dwight. And you know, really in the same way we asked the 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 poll, you know, forgiven, indifferent, hate him. You know, I think I think I think it's time to open the floor. Let's hear it. I cannot tell you how happy I was. I forget what year it was, but in the playoffs, Portland versus the Houston <laughs> Rockets. When Damian Lillard hit the three to send the Rockets home, and then after the game, you see Lillard in Dwight Howard's face, mm. and I'm I'm not going to share the things that I was chanting <laughs> during that time. It was before I met Christ, <laughs> but um, I I hated Dwight Howard for a long, long time. I still I, I'm still not a huge Dwight Howard like the person. Like I still you know some things about his personality. I think it's people understand why he might rub you the wrong way. But I, I do think, you know, we've we've seen kind of the evolution of Dwight throughout the years, like especially with like the the title run, you know, and he, we saw him win the title with the Lakers. And part of that, like seeing him accept like a bench role and just really buying into the team, I, part of that was endearing. But like he's also the number one reason for the most fun part of my magic fandom of my entire life. And at some point, holding on to that and remembering that and not just having this sour taste in my mouth about those teams, I want to say like three or four years ago, maybe even maybe even more recent than that, I found that to be more important to me to hold on to than the hate that I have for Dwight Howard. 
especially when you know we we talk about how you know we don't have any you know players jerseys retired and at that point it, it's hard to find like part of the reason I was so upset about Nikola Vucevic being traded is I wanted him to be like our guy forever and not be associated with all these other teams in the way that Shaq and you know Tracy McGrady are and Dwight is even to a certain extent um like I, I, we we talk about that so much, and like we have as fans, we have to start to be the example of that, and we ha- we have to welcome these guys back if we want to appreciate like magic history. So I have forgiven Dwight Howard. I just bought a Dwight Howard jersey like three days ago. Love that. So that's where I'm at. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll kind of answer that next as to how I feel about Dwight. I, I'm I'm completely over it. Like I'm 25 now. <laughs> Uh, when it happened, I was 15 years old. Like you, you can get over things in 10 years, guys. I promise. If you can get through your first really bad breakup in a matter of like six months to a year, I promise you can get through Dwight Howard 10 years later. Like it's just one of those things, man, where it's, it's a lot of my personality, which is just very laid back and very go with the flow. And like what, what happened happened. Like it's very cut and dry. Um, so as a result, I, I don't have any disdain for Dwight Howard, I people are not going to like this. Maybe even the people that have forgiven him doesn't mean they were rooting for him. I was rooting for him to win a ring with the Lakers. Like I, I just, I was, I was like, man, I wish you would have done that. I was rooting for Dwight Howard, not necessarily like the right. Lakers. Well, plus I, mean, I like LeBron. Just... So I was, I was LeBron Dwight combo that I was like, I would love to see. Well, I have to say I was rooting against the heat. So I guess I Absolutely. was rooting for the Lakers. Yeah, of yeah. course. Um, but yeah, so I, I think that I just I've never really given my like let myself solely like just be so down on myself and Dwight Howard and the magic and whatever. Like I the, Dwight is not the reason this team has sucked for for this long. Like he he did his thing and and that was it. And he gave us like Jonathan said, like one of the and that's what really outweighs it for me. And this is the reason I've never felt like I hate Dwight Howard. Like, don't get me wrong. There was times where I was like, I don't, I don't like that he left, um, and I don't like what happened. But now, like, especially hindsight's twenty twenty. But the more that I hear, whether it's Stan tweeting like Dwight didn't get me fired, Dwight to this day uh, saying like I didn't do it. Like I, I, I was not doing that. I never said it. Whatever. That type of stuff makes me feel better about my stance on Dwight. Where it's like, I, it, it is what it is but I don't hate Dwight Howard and I don't know if I ever did. And if I did, it wasn't for very long. So it does shock me though, still that there's even that percentage. Like when I really think about it, that are like, no, I still hate him. It's like, man, I don't know. Yeah. For me, there was 100% a time when I hated Dwight. Definitely did. Like the immediate aftermath, um, for a lot of the reasons you already mentioned, you know, the the whole drama of the year and then getting the best coach in the history of our franchise fired at, at the time you know we thought that i still think that it might not be true but at the time i thought man you got him fired and you still left like all those things that we talked about and then yeah i i couldn't stand him booed him like any chance i could um i was thrilled whenever you know he didn't play well or like like you said even that even that houston Portland series, which was really fun, just as a basketball fan anyway, to have a, a series ending buzzer beater is just crazy. But for it to be with Dwight in his face, I I rooted for that. However, time heals wounds. Um, today, I would say I am at the point where I have forgiven Dwight. I am this close to rooting for him, and the only thing that is keeping me from rooting for him is I just need some, I need some ownership. Like I, I need Dwight over his entire career, every quote, every something, it has not been his fault. It has been always put on some, someone else front office. Even, even that, even that, um, that quote we took earlier today from the ETO thing, he said, I ha- I was given bad advice. You know, I had bad people around me, whatever it was. Um, and even looking back, I, I just, I want some ownership. Like, hey, I messed this up. I apologize. Regardless of whether he had people speaking into him, like at the end of the day, it's his decision. And I, I want that ownership. I want that apology to Magic fans because that that was 
that whole year, year and a half was not fun. But that being said, just like you said, Jonathan, like those first seven years that Dwight was there, like just the most fun times. Like I'm one of those losers that like has the magic way too high on my priority scale in life. And so like, we're sitting right I here, know. bro. That's a, I'm, <laughs> saying, I'm one of them. You know, there's a lot of us. No, not a lot of. There's several of us in the world. And so, like, when that team was at its peak, it was just the most fun, like, of my life. I know that sounds dumb. Like, yeah, there's family stuff. Like, I got married. I got kids. That's a different kind of fun. Like, it's just, like, me yeah. as a hobby, like, a human being, the most fun time of my life. And Dwight was the guy. Like, he was the superstar level. He was on the video games. He was, you know national media and he was fun like he was a fun guy he was so fun and so that i that that was just so so amazing and so i will definitely take those moments with me to my grave and i'm so grateful for that so that's why i have forgiven him because i'm able to look back on that stuff now um and because time you know kind of heals wounds the only thing that keeps me from just rooting for him is just i just want i just want a little bit of just acceptance of responsibility and and a true apology to Magic fans for that year, year and a half. That was just a mess. It was terrible. So, but yeah, that's where I stand. And I, I think, Kevin, to your point, that that's even something that could keep him from like truly being endeared amongst Magic fans like forever, like leading into the future. People are always going to have a little, like you can forget what your your girlfriend did. You know, you can forgive her. But you're like, eh, you know what? I, I don't I don't want you around that guy. Or I, you know, I don't want Absolutely. you going out with those girls yep. again. You know what I mean? Do you think, Kevin, that that is something that could or should keep Dwight from the Orlando Magic Hall of Fame? Like, if he cannot accept responsibility for his part in that, does the team still honor Dwight? And I think it's two conversations. Will they and should yeah. they? I feel like. I feel like they will. Um, yeah. Because they've already inducted some guys that had bad endings in Orlando, you know. Um, obviously, Shaq, you know, being the first one that comes to mind. Um, now, Shaq has said some things since then. Um, you know, that's kind of backtracked a little bit of, you know, he he's, I don't think he's full on said, I wish I had stayed, but he said, I wish it, it went a little bit differently how it went down, you know. Um, and the Magic have kind of, He's, he's kind of been around the franchise more and more in the last couple of years for that. And so I have a feeling they will. Um, yeah. uh, it's, it's definitely interesting because a lot of the people that were calling the shots then are still around, obviously, um, you know, a, a little bit different. Like Bob Vanderweet isn't here, isn't really, you know, as involved, well, not involved at all really as he was then. Um, it's really uh, Alex Martins, you know, who's, who's still kind of around. And so it's, it probably really comes down to him, honestly. You know, he was still there, but that's a whole separate conversation. I think they will. I, th- I think they will at some point. I think they will. Um, but I, I I do think that, you know, I, I'm kind of right there with you that uh, it needs to be acknowledged. And wh- whether it's an outright apology or whether it's, you know, I wish things would have went differently, like something to that effect. Not that it was just like everyone else's fault, but I think... And, and from the the results that we got from the poll, most people have moved on in one way or another, and they might just be indifferent because they weren't around. You know, like, oh, I don't, I never watched the guy play, so I don't really care one way or the other. Okay, the last part of this that I want to get into, and this is something that you know, this this topic has been sparked up a couple couple of times over the course of the last few months. We talk about Dwight getting snubbed from the All Seventy Five team. Um, And then really just recently, you know, on Twitter, you know, who is the greatest magic player of all time? And I think people, especially the folks that were not around to watch Dwight during his prime, forget that Dwight Howard was legitimately one of the best players in the league. Like one of the top five, like inarguably one of the top five best players in the league. Is Dwight Howard the greatest magic player of all time? Kevin, start. So one of the big things that uh, I brought up in this conversation on Twitter was to me and to the vast majority of people out there, there is a difference between best and greatest. There is a difference. I don't care. I mean, there's there's a couple clowns out there, and I'll just call them clowns because if you're the only people saying it, then 98% of other people are disagreeing with you, then you're the clown. 
Um, there's a difference between greatest and best. <laughs> uh, you know, best can be like the most talented, the most gifted. The best player in the history of the Orlando Magic is Shaquille O'Neal. Like, you can't argue with that. Like, if you look at his body of work over the course of his career, and even the talent when he was in Orlando, he was the best player in Magic history. Um, the greatest player in Magic history is Dwight Howard because, like you said, for that era, he was one of the best players in the league, and he had an era. Like, he was here for uh, 2004 to 12, you know, eight years, um, and the vast majority of those were winning seasons, took us to the finals, took us to our best regular season ever the next year in the Eastern Conference Finals, um, won three Defensive Player of the Year awards. Like, that's insane. Yeah, back to back to back. Come on. I mean, like, it's ridiculous. And so, um, yeah, I mean, for me, he's the greatest of all time, you know, as far as Magic players go. Um, I think probably, like I said, Shaq's probably better. Um, his tenure wasn't the same. Uh, and T-Mac was definitely the best scorer in Magic history, you know. But as far as greatest, it's for me, it's Dwight. I, and I just, I, I do not understand this debate. I'll just be honest. I, it's not close to me. Like, it's just not close. Before we go to Luke, this is the the example that I think is like the best like support to your argument is you would probably say that LeBron James is one of the most talented Lakers of all time, but are you putting him over Magic Johnson or Kobe Bryant as the greatest Lakers no. ever? Of course you wouldn't. Right, and I so it's a different. I know the Toronto Raptors are a very like uh, touchy subject right now with the Orlando Magic fan base. But they're, they're probably the best example of this ever because the best player in Raptors history, there's a list of guys. could be Kawhi. You know, Vince was there. T-Mac was there. But the greatest Raptor of all time is Kyle Lowry. You ask any Raptors fans, and I can't stand the guy. Let's be very clear. That guy is, well, you know. But he's you ask any Raptor fan, and Kyle Lowry is the greatest Raptor player of all time. He's not the best. Are you kidding me? No. Anyway. That's that's what I want to say. Uh, yeah, I mean he's he's absolutely he's the Dwight is the the greatest Magic player, the greatest player to ever put on the pinstripes, to uh to to win the dunk contest, to win three <laughs> defensive player, you know, back to back to back, to do what he did, take that team uh to the finals. I mean, what he did and the amount of years that is the biggest part right like that's the biggest part of the argument it's like it's like you said Shaq, talent wise the best but when it comes to longevity and and like kevin alluded to or said like dwight was an iron man dwight like wasn't missing chunks of the season he was always playing he wasn't just always playing he was always putting up video game numbers night in and night out whether it was his rebound total or his blocks or his points like he was just through the roof the anchor to the magic for as long as he was with the organization it stinks that it ended the way it did and maybe that's the reason that some people won't admit that he's the greatest magic player of all time but i i think that it's a no-brainer i mean i i think that all you have to do is list the accolades side by side what did they do when they were on the team at the time and dwight checks all the boxes Dwight is the greatest magic player of all time. I think a lot of the like the debate about because it's it comes down to two guys. It's it's Shaq or it's Dwight. Any other conversation, I I will I'm sorry I will not hear. Like Tracy McGrady is my favorite player of all time in the history of the world, but it's it's Dwight and it's Shaq if you're going to have the conversation at all. So what I'd like to do is just kind of go through a list of very both of them very impressive you know, resumes with the Orlando Magic. I'll go through Shaq first. So 1992 through 96, four seasons. So 8,019 points, which comes to 27.2 points per game. 3,691 rebounds, which comes to 12.5 rebounds per game. 824 blocks, 2.8 blocks per game. 716 assists, 2.4 assists per game. 243 steals, 0.8 steals per game. Four-time All-Star, one-time scoring leader, three-time All-NBA, one second team, two third NBA teams, four consecutive years of finishing top 10 in MVP voting, 1993 through 1996, led the Magic to the 1995 Eastern Conference Finals uh, Championship and into the NBA Finals at 22 years old, 
In terms of all-time Magic accolades, he is sixth in points, third in rebounds, second in blocks, third in free throws made, fourth in win shares. Incredible resume. Dwight blows his out of the water. So Dwight, in terms of points, you know, almost 4,000 more points, 11,435 points, 18.4 points per game, more than doubles Shaq's rebounds, 8,072 rebounds, 13 rebounds a game, uh, almost, uh, not quite double, but about almost 500 more blocks uh, than, than Shaq, 13.44, 2.2 blocks per game, uh, 200 more assists, 935, 1.5 assists per game. And more than doubles uh, Shaq's steals, 626 steals, one steal per game. Now, this is where we really start to separate um, in terms of league accolades. So six-time All-Star, three-time Defensive Player of the Year, back-to-back-to-back. The only player to do that ever. There is one list. It is Dwight Howard. Four-time rebound leader. Shaq never did that in Orlando. Two-time block leader. Shaq never did that in Orlando. Now, I understand you know the league was different. You had guys like you know uh, David Robinson and Hakeem Olajuwon and all these other guys. Uh, but Dwight, six-time All NBA, five first teams, one third team, five-time All Defensive Team, uh, four consecutive years finishing top five in MVP voting. So for four straight years, wow. Dwight Howard was one of the absolute best players in the NBA. Uh, that was 2008 through 2011. Um, 2009 Eastern Conference Finals champion, 23 years old. He is first in minutes, third in games, first in points, first in rebounds, fourth in steals, first in blocks, first in free throws, first in win shares. Like, what are we? What are we doing? What is this conversation? Like, come on, <laughs> come on. This is what can I just honestly say one more thing. Someone, someone on Twitter, one of the two clowns, talked about mm. uh, per game, like. Oh, points per game, Shaq, look at the uh, rebounds per game, whatever. Like, <laughs> like okay, if you're going, like, per game, like, like uh, Jeff Doughton Jr., he averages <laughs> one preseason game winner per game. <laughs> you know, it's like, that's I don't mean that to, like, harp on Jeff Doughton Jr., but, like, like that's, like, if it, it's, you can't, the per game, like, when we're talking about the grand scheme of, like, this franchise, that's just, that's foolish. Like, what are we doing? Like, you know, I just, that's crazy. And there, there's something else that I feel like we do need to mention. Shaq's cultural impact on the Magic organization and the city of Orlando is a massive deal. Like, Orlando is not the metropolitan area that Correct. it is without Shaquille Correct. O'Neal putting the Magic on the map. The Orlando Magic's cultural you know, importance and relevance is nothing without Shaq putting on the pinch totally strikes. True. The Magic are not in Orlando right now without Dwight. That's the other side of that coin. Because the Magic were going to leave true. in the mid two thousands, in theory. But that, like that was a very strong rumor they were going to Kansas City or somewhere else. Yeah. And when Dwight came and made helped make the team better again, literally he's the reason the Amway Center exists. Literally, put the Amway it Center. Is the house that Dwight the built. The house that Dwight built. So like, what you said is totally true about Shaq, Dwight you know, kind of took it to the next level. Like he continued that. Um, so, uh, but yeah. you're totally right about Shaq. Yeah. I just don't feel like there's, is, is much of a, of a debate here. It's, it's about longevity. It's about what you accomplished here at the absolute peak of their powers. If there's one guy that I need for one game in magic history, I'm taking nineties, early nineties yep. Shaq, like just, just flat out. But if you're going to tell me, you're either going to get Shaq for four years, or you're going to get Dwight for eight years. I'm taking Dwight for eight years, and I'm not even thinking about it at all. Absolutely. 100%. I feel like we've said all that we need to say. I, I, I think this has been a, a great conversation. I think it's going to be super informative for people that weren't around. I think it's going to be a good opportunity for people that might still feel like they hate Dwight to kind of reflect and, and maybe like think about that. But I also think there's going to be a lot of people that agreed with every single word that we said on this. Yep. Yep. We have anything else, anything that we want to add? No, nope. not me. This is fun. No. Nope. All right. It was a lot of fun for Kevin Tucker, for Luke Sylvia. This has been Jonathan Osborne. You guys have been listening to the six man show and we will catch you guys next time. See ya. Thanks for listening to the six man show. 
Be sure to subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, and Stitcher to get new episodes downloaded directly to your phone. Please take a minute to give us a five-star rating and a review. It would really help us out a lot. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Six Man Show and like us on Facebook. We'll catch you guys next time. Go Magic!